Now in this video we are going to start the line integrals. For this we require a parametrization. Parametrization you can do for straight line, parabola, circle and ellipse. For straight line y is equal to a plus bx. So in that case you put x equal to t then automatically y will become a plus bt. And suppose we have a point a and b at parametrization we are done in the line we are know that the start point is t equal to 0 and end point is t equal to 1 if you are given the two coordinates you can use this technique if you are not given the equation of line for this you check the video of straight line in 3d space t is equal to x minus x1 upon x2 minus x1 same can be repeat for y y minus y1 upon y2 minus y1 and z minus z1 upon z2 minus z1 so you can use this also to find out the value of x y and z in terms of t if you are given the point a and point b and recall that your limit is always from 0 to 1 if you are given the equation of straight line in that case you replace x is equal to t and then you can solve for y is equal to a plus b t in that case your position vector is simply x and y is given as x i and y j so x is equal to t and y will be equals to a plus b t similarly if you are given the parabola y is equal to a into b plus x square so simply again put x equal to t and solve for y so we will get y is equal to a plus b t square so it's a very simple technique of parametrization only advantage of parametrization is that we quickly solve the integral for circle we have x square plus y square equal to a square so put x equal to a cos t and y is equal to a sin t where a will be your radius and in case of ellipse your same technique as a circle because ellipse is a special case of circle so put x equal to a cos t and y is equal to b sin t even for a circle ellipse and in straight line and parabola put x equal to t and solve for y as per the equation given to you normally line integral has to be solved for two function one is called scalar function and one is called as vector function so basically line integral will classify into two categories that the function is a scalar function or the given function is a vector function so first of all we will discuss the scalar function so in the case of scalar function we want to find out integral f so we have f dr that integral you want to solve, find out here f is a scalar function can be exp written as x square plus 2xy so there is no terms of i and j in that case the function is called as scalar function whereas in the vector function there is always present the terms of i and j and we want to find out the vector integral of f bar dot d bar so this is how we can classify the two functions as scalar function and vector function and we are interested in two integrals one is line integral of a scalar function and the vector function to find out this we have a position vector here r bar which gives the position from the origin so it is same for the vector function also is xi plus yj x and y and z are the coordinates of the given point from the origin so we can obtain the value of dr as a dxi plus dyj plus dzk so integral f dr is basically f into dxi plus dyj plus dzk now here f is a function of basically as x y z your job is to convert this function f in form of x y z in terms of t using parametrization technique either for circle ellipse parabola or a straight line using the given equations once we do that we can write the function f in terms of t so let's say the x is represented as function of f of t y is a function of g of t and the z is a function of h of t so in this fashion we have any parametrization as per the requirement of a curve C is along a straight line or parabola then we can very well write the function in the form of f of t so we can very well convert all these x square plus 2xy in terms of t since we know the value of x, y, z in terms of t say for example f of t will be equals to t square plus 3 times of t so in this fashion you can get certain value of f of t in terms of t integral as now since dr is written already in the term of t what we do is that we will differentiate dr with respect to t and we can obtain dr by dt so dr by dt will be equals to so dr will come something like this form so it can be very well differentiate with respect to t so you have to get ready with dr by dt 
So we have a function f in terms of t and we have dr by dt. So what we do then, we put the limit as t equal to 0 and t equal to 1. But you have to confirm this limit. All these things we will discuss in detail when we come to the numericals. How to select the limit. So the given integral f dr which is f into dx of i plus dy of j plus dz of k is f dr by dt. So dt term is extra here. So we'll take the mod of this value and we'll multiply it by dt. In that case your dt and dt will get cancelled. And the same integral can be solved from the limit t equal to 0 to t equal to 1. That is from initial value to final value. It may change. You have to calculate the limit every time. So you can write this integral in this form. So this is how you can solve the scalar function. Whereas in the case of vector function, you don't have to take the mod of dr by dt. Rather than simply rearrange this equation as f bar into dr by dt into dt. So this is the only change in the solving the scalar function and vector function. Don't take modulus. Simply take the dot product of dr by dt. Because f is already function of t and r is also function of t. So dr by dt is also function of t. You can very well obtain this product and then we put the limit of t from t initial to t final. So in scalar function take mod, mod of dr by dt. And in vector function, simply take dr by dt.